you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. 1 Samuel chapter 3. In the first verse, the Bible says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, wherefore the ark, where, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, and he said I called not, I called not, lie down again. And he went away and lay down. And when the Lord called and the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you. We praise You for Your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank You for the people that are gathered together this morning uh, to lift up Your name and to give You glory and honor. Lord, we pray that You would grant us the Holy Ghost this morning and that You would meet with us and that You make these words on this page, Lord, the very Word of God. Lord, we pray that You would save the lost that meet with us, Lord God, that You might minister to them and speak to them and... and and save their souls, Lord, according to mercy and grace and pray it. And Lord, for those of us that uh, sometimes walk at a guilty distance, Lord, we pray that You might uh, draw us into Yourself. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to be preaching this morning when God reveals truth. Uh, and I'll say this before we really get started. If God don't reveal a truth to you, it will never mean very much to you. And in other words, if, you, if He's not the one that gives it, and He's not the one that grants it, you'll never value it. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll never embrace it. It will never mean very much to you if it's not a revealed truth. And I'll go even further. All the truths of the Word of God is revealed. You may know them up here, but you don't know them in your spirit. Uh, in the first verse, we'll go back there. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Now, I want you to see that uh, even though, and by his own, uh, by, by the own word of God, it says that he didn't know the Lord. He ministered unto the Lord by helping Eli. So, the first thing we learn from this text: you can do a lot of things in the church and be lost. You can attend regularly. You can uh, uh, you can uh, you know help with the yard work, or you can uh, cook something, and a lot of things you can do. But that don't make you saved. And that was Eli's. I mean, uh, that was Samuel's problem that he was lost. And I want you to see, there's not a lot in the Bible of children recording of children being saved, but this is one of them. You know, I've heard some Baptist preachers even tell, tell me they didn't think a child could be saved. Well, they have, if they believe that, they'll have to do something with Samuel. Because Samuel was saved. And, and, and by estimation, he's probably seven or eight years old at this time. But I want you to see that he was doing things for the Lord, and yet he was lost. And, and I'm fearful today that's a lot of people's problem that they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just going and doing and doing and doing, but they really don't know Him. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Now, if ever time was that we live when the, when the word is precious, it's today. 
You can go all through Stewart County, and I guarantee you there is not one other pastor that will tell you there's nothing you can do to be saved. The very closest that you can get, somebody might say the Lord has to save you, but in that they really don't know what they're meaning. Because then they'll take that very same book and get you to repeat some kind of stupid prayer. Right? So, we live when the Word of God is a precious, precious thing. There are very uh, uh, few people today that will say, hey, listen, road flash, there's a garment that pertaineth unto a man and a garment pertaineth unto a woman. That's a precious truth today. People don't want it. There, 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 there's not many today that will say, the Bible says this, it is a shame for a man to have long hair. And you know, everybody's like, woo! And they always shout, and they're glad about that. But you know what the Bible also says? If you believe that, you have to believe the other side of it. And it is a shame for a woman to have short hair. If you believe one, you have to believe the other, right? And, and, and so then we as Lord's people... Just in the days, just as it was in the days of Eli, it's a precious thing to find somebody to tell you the truth. The Lord, the, the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Now, this was very early in the history of the of the nation. Later, there would be a great deal of open vision. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Uh, but at this time, there was nothing being said of the Word of God. You know what? Uh, you, many times today, what you'll find is the heavens are silent. You, 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 you remember uh, as, as John is receiving the revelation uh, about midway through, about 13, along in there somewhere, he says there was silence for the space of an hour. Uh, that's where we live. We, you know, it, it, we're, you know it, it is few and far between that you find a man of God that's going to tell you some truth and that the Holy Spirit will show up and minister to you. Verse 2, And it came to pass at that time when Eli, that was the old man, was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. Now, uh, lo a lot could go into that. Probably uh, Eli, he, he may have been a diabetic and, and developing some visual problems like that. He could have had cataracts. I don't know. But I can uh, certainly sympathize with Eli because I can't see without my glasses. I just can't, I can't see even enough to recognize my wife without my glasses. And, and so I can get it. But now, on, on top of being physically unable to see, see, Eli had, uh, Eli had let his children go so much it was beginning to affect his spiritual vision. And you can let your kids go so far that it will affect your spiritual vision. You don't, you, you, you no longer see in a spiritual sense. You can get out involved in this world enough that you no longer see things in a spiritual context. That was Eli's problem. You know, the worst thing you can ever do for your kids is defend them when they're wrong. That is the worst thing you will ever do for your kids. You know what? Uh, when they're wrong, they need, they need the backside busted. That's what they need. Now, growing up down here at Carlisle, it, I mean, literally, before you got to the house, Mama done knew. You see, they're standing there waiting for you when you when, when you came into the yard. You know what? That's a good thing. Then, then mothers had their little network and, and, and nothing went by them. And, and, and you know what? That's the very same thing this morning with you and the Lord God. He knows what's going on and yet still we defend something that's not even right. Eli's son, Hophani and Phinehas was literally... Literally taking things off the altar for themselves. They were laying around with women in the temple building. Right. They, uh, they, they, they were very ungodly people. And the reason they got get there is because their daddy's vision was dimmed. You know what? We, we, need, uh, we need to get back to the point where we see things for as they are. 
You know, uh, it never ceases to amaze me when someone dies, you know, just start drunk and wraps their car around an oak tree, all of a sudden they was a Christian yeah. way back when they was a kid. Yeah. You know what they're lacking? They're lacking spiritual e uh, vision. They're an Eli. Mm -hmm. They're an Eli in what they say. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, we need to pray that we would never get in that situation and that we could see things from a spiritual context. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. Now I want you to see, because uh, this is kind of stuck in there in the middle, this is another thing that... Uh, that Samuel did, and that was to keep the oil in the lamp. That lamp could never go out. If it went out, and it, it represented the Spirit of God leaving Israel. And so you know what? Uh, a lot of times what we need to do is just keep plenty of oil on the hand. Remember in the New Testament, in the parable of the virgins, some of them ran out, didn't they? Uh, you know, you know what Eli's problem here was. He was running out of spiritual juice, and you know what? Without without the help of God, you will too. You 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 won't be able to continue in the end because you're operating on self. And, and so we find then that Eli uh, was in this situation, and Samuel was doing the work of the temple. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, which represented the presence of God, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, and the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Now, uh, we're fixing to go through a series where the Lord calls Samuel actually four separate times, and that is truly knowing the Lord. You, you know what the problem today, if I said to these little fellows over here, listen, y'all come up here and repeat a little prayer. You know what the problem was that they'll leave here still not knowing God. And you know what? As good as Samuel was, he was trimming lamps and he was helping uh, Eli get around because Eli was about half blind. Samuel was still lost. And you know what lost people act like? They act like lost people. They do not love God. They, do not, they are not interested in the things of God. They may pretend to be, but they are not. And, and you know what? Uh, unabridged, they'll go out and they'll act just like the rest of the world. And so we find here that what we need in the modern day is getting back to this point, if you're not called, you're still lost. Yeah. That, that, that's the simple thing of it. If the Lord hasn't spoken to you, then you are still lost. And, and when we begin to think about, uh, listen, am I really saved? You go back to that calling. Because listen, it's not what you did, it's what God did. It's what Christ did. And if it's not based on the person of Christ, you know what? You're still lost. That's about as simple uh, as it could be made. And so then we as Lord, we need to be interested in knowing where we stand. Verse uh, 5. And he, meaning Samuel, ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now, I want you to see in verse 5, it literally says, Samuel. Now, when the Lord saved me, I did not hear him say, Larry. But I will say this. I knew it was all about me. I, I knew through the Holy Ghost that I was guilty and deserved hell. Deserved hell fully. And I knew when He, when he spoke to me and my sins were forgiven. See, that's not emphasized today. And you know what? You know what the end result is? You have a church full of lost people. That, 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 that's the end result. And then you have a church that's really of no use to God because it's not made up of saved folks anymore. And so then we find that this is the calling that has to be here. 
Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now I have that underlined in my Bible and I would suggest that you do too. Because you know what that says? We're not born knowing the Lord. We're not even born perfect. That, that, that sinless baby, you know what that is? That's a Catholic fairy tale. If you raised as many youngins as I had, you know they ain't sinless. Right? And so then we see as the Lord's people that there was a time when Samuel, even though he was good, man, he lived in the temple. He lived with Eli. I remember Hannah brought him up there and says, There he's yours. I want him to serve you all the days of his life. And yet he was still lost. Yeah. That, that was Eli's position. And you know what? <laughs> it's your position too if you've never been saved. Yeah. You're just like Eli. Uh, he hasn't spoken to you. He hasn't, he hasn't saved your soul. So we as the Lord's people need to have an interest in having the type of salvation that Samuel had. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Now, I want you to uh, think about this. Um, how rusty and how cold and how indifferent Eli had become. Because see, he didn't even he didn't even understand. You know what? A spiritual man, a man that's in tune with God, knows. Bow can look at an individual and know if the Lord's dealing with them. See, somewhere along the way, Eli had let Hophni and Phinehas uh, influence him so he didn't have the spiritual knowledge to know that God was dealing with somebody. And, and you know what? You, you, you see that a great deal in the modern age that, that pastors just don't, don't have enough spiritual sense to know what's going on even in and among their own people. But finally it dawned on him and Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be if he call thee. Now I want you to get this too. If, <laughs> if you're an elect, he's going to keep calling you. See, this is the thing. Christ has never done, God has never done a work, He has never started a work that He didn't complete. Did you know that? And, and, and if he spoke to, you know what? The very moment he said, Samuel, Samuel was going to say, because our God doesn't finish, he, uh, he, he, he finishes every work that he's ever started, and he always will. And, and so, really, Eli was showing a little bit of spiritual ignorance when he says, if he calls you again, because listen, if he's called by God, he's going to call him, and he's going to call him, and he's going to call him, and eventually, he'll hear with a spiritual ear. Now, what Eli, I mean, excuse me, what Samuel lacked until just a minute from now, and we're fixing to see that he's going to be saved, is that he, he is a spiritual ear. Now, listen, we're, most of us are born with ears. And most of us can hear at least some. But you're not born with a spiritual ear. It's a granted gift. Remember, as uh, John's writing to the churches, he that have an ear, let him hear. In other words, not everybody's going to hear the spiritual information in those letters. In fact, if you follow the history of the Laodicean church, None of them heard. They ceased to exist. They were, out of, uh, they were out of the way. And listen, they was the richest group among them. And they still had no spiritual gifts. So not everybody's going to hear. You know, the, the, the most blessed day in my ministry was the day that I finally realized, hey, I don't have to talk, any, I don't have to talk nobody into nothing. It's not my business if they listen. That's up to God. You know that, that that's a lot of that's that's a lot of relief off your back. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt speak, Lord, 
Uh, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. What a glorious day. What a wonderful, wonderful... You know, uh, and it says there, and we have to believe it is the Word of God, that it came, He came to him and stood and said, Samuel, Samuel. You know what? That, that's, and you know, knowing the nature of the Almighty God, Jehovah, and His holy sinfulness, uh, I mean sinlessness, you have to believe that this person that came and seen Him was none other than Christ. Because Christ can, Christ can commune with sinners. In fact, all through His ministry, He was criticized for that, was He not? And so He said, Samuel, Samuel. You know, isn't it a blessed, wonderful thing to think on and remember the day that He called you? Yeah. You know, uh, if, I, if I live to be a hundred, there will be no other day that I could possibly ever have as precious as that one was. Yeah. And, and, and so we see then uh, that, that Samuel got something real from God. And I think that's our lacking thing among people. You, you, know, you know what? People that are supposed to be saved and, and never come to church. You know, I, I have a real issue with that. Because if they're called, I think they'll have a desire to be there, don't you? And then if they're not, the result's pretty easy to come to, is it not? And, and, and so then we, as the Lord's people, you need to be sure you have something akin to this when you think of salvation. Verse 11, And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a, uh, a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I judge the house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his son made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Now, I want you to see, <laughs> it, it, you know... <laughs> Man, Eli, I mean, Samuel's first sermon wasn't going, be, wasn't going to be able to, he wasn't going to be able to tell people how good they were, was it? His first sermon wasn't on the divinity of God, was it? His first sermon wasn't on how God loved the nation of Israel, and he does. His very first sermon was this. Eli, you've messed up as a daddy, and you're going to pay. Now this, this, uh, this uh, little boy, that ministered in the temple, been a friend to Eli, been a help to Eli, was going to have to say, now Eli, you got a real problem. Um, how'd you like to preach that to somebody? See, uh, this, is the, this is the burden of the ministry. It's not, it is not a pleasant thing. Because you have to tell people truths that they do not want to hear. Right? You have to say, you have to tell them, listen, uh, you're in great need of redemption, and there's no way to get it unless it's of the goodness of God. People don't like to hear that. People don't like to hear come out from among them and be a shepherd, thus saith the Lord. People do not like to hear it. Yeah. Right? So the very first sermon this little seven or nine year old boy was going to preach was in the face of a man that he respected and that outline said because you won't parent any better than you're parenting and you're letting them ungodly Eli and uh, Hophni and Phinehas doing what they want to, listen, you're going to pay. And you know what? He did. You know, you, you know how you know how Eli died. He was sitting on a on a log, and then he was blind as a bat. And somebody ran from the battle and says, "How the battle goeth?" And he says, "The ark of the covenant's been taken." And he said, "When he did, Eli fell over backwards and broke his neck and killed him." 
See, uh, not only do your parent, do your children pay in how you parent, you do too. You do too. And, and so we find then, uh, as the Lord's people, what our desire ought to be, and what we uh, we ought to uh, desire for our people is that we would have a revealed truth. Now, Samuel, as as according to his nature was. He went in and he told it exactly like it was. He, he told, listen, you know what? Huh. It's going to be that way. And as difficult as it is for a preacher, all you can do is tell him the truth. In, in, uh, you know what the Bible says concerning salvation? You shall know them by their fruits. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, You know what that tells me? That God's people will be faithful. And if they're not faithful, we have no reason to believe that they're God's people to start with, right? See, that's not, a, that's not one of those sermons you just want to go over here and hug each other, is it? But it's the truth. And so we find that, first Sam, that Samuel's first message was not what most would like to preach. But we find that 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 revealing saved his soul and that revealing gave him the strength to preach exactly as he was supposed to. Now go with me to Isaiah and we mentioned that just a little bit in passing. This is a little bit later in the history of Israel and uh, they are being warned of uh, they're being warned of some things that are here ahead. Isaiah 53 in the very first verse. Isaiah 53 in the first verse, who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? Now, Isaiah is asking this, and Isaiah's report was not good. Now, if you ever have, you, you know, it never ceases to amaze me when I worked at this little hospital down here in Erin, worked there two times, for little short stints, uh, uh, because I uh, couldn't find nothing else. Well, I wasn't just that, I like I liked little hospitals. But we had these physicians that would come up from Vanderbilt, we called them rental doctors. And uh, they would come up and, and they would cover the ER for us. And, and some of them were really good physicians. But what I found consistently, if there was a big trauma event or a heart attack or something like that, and the patient, there's one physician in particular, a little short fella, uh, and he would not go tell the family that they didn't make it. And that was a nurse's duty. And I want to say, well, you know what? I went to nursing school for four years and they never did tell me that. But we would do it. And you know why he wanted it? us? To, we were doing the revealing. People just don't like to get bad news. Right. Well, listen, I've got some bad news and good news for you this morning. The bad news is this. If you're not saved, you're on your way to hell. Yeah. That's bad news. But there's hope in the person of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, when Isaiah asked this question... You know who it was? It was a minute few. In fact, I only know of four for sure. I'm sure there were others. But of the people that went into captivity, you know the only four, four I could say I'm pretty sure were saved folks? Daniel. <laughs> Daniel was one of them. And then uh, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what? <laughs> That's the four that, that he was revealed to. You know what? We shouldn't be too discouraged over that. When, when the numbers look small, you know what? They've always been small. Who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Yeah. There, there, there's our word again. There, uh, you, know, you know who is the revealer of all things? It is the person of the Lord God Almighty. And if He doesn't reveal it, you know what? Your Christianity won't last as long as a June frost. Your desire and your drive to meet with God's people will not be there. You will think of every excuse you can to keep from coming to the house of God. And you know why? He's never been revealed. 
You know why people can't understand the holiness of God today? And He is holy. We can't even approach Him without the merit of Christ. And you know what the big thing is today? Well, God is love. Well, He is love. But you know what else, what else He is? He's holy. He's righteous. He's sinless. And the Bible says He's wrathful. Why don't we hear about those? Well, I'll tell you why. They've not been revealed. We have, we have a lot of preachers today <laughs> they don't have the revealing of the Lord God. And you can read the rest of that uh, whole uh, 53rd chapter this week if you wish to. And it reveals Christ as the dying man on Calvary. It reveals Christ as the one that was smitten and beaten for our sins. It reveals the Christ who shed His blood on our behalf. That is the Christ that's revealed. And you know what? That wasn't the King that Israel wanted. Israel wanted a king to sit on David's throne and what they got was a spiritual king and they did not want him. You know what? We live in a day and age today where people don't want Christ. I'll say this, they don't want the Christ of the Bible. They want a Christ, but they don't want the Christ of the Bible. Because see, the Christ of the Bible uh, calls us to service. And we don't want to serve Him. Right? And so then we as the Lord's people, we need to be uh, very in tune. Has He been revealed to me? Do I really know Christ? That's why James said, make your calling and election sure. Do I really know the person of Christ? Do I know Him? No greater question could you ever answer. If you live to be 110, do I really, really know Christ? Uh, and you know, this is what I found. If you really know Him, He'll keep revealing Himself to you. You, you could never know everything about Christ. Did you know that? Me and Doug have been married 30 years, and there's still things that I'm just now figuring out. Uh, and I'm sure the same is true for, for her to me. And if you get in that book, you'll find new things about Christ every day. I'll tell you one that we all should amen on this. He ain't that long-haired thing that most people call Christ. Why would He do something that would violate His own very own work? He didn't have long hair. That's a Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we, we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know has He revealed Himself to me? Because therein is the answer. Are you saved? Are you lost? Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Uh, very familiar verses. Uh, I, love the, uh, I love these verses. Matthew 16, uh, verse 16. Matthew 16, verse 16. The Bible says this. Or hit 15. Matthew 16, 15, and he, meaning Jesus, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Who do you say Christ is this morning? Do you say he's somebody trying to save you? Or is he the sinless Son of God? Do you think he's some long haired hippie? Or is he a holy, righteous individual? Who do you say Christ is? Is He someone trying to save you or is He the mighty, the mighty Son of the Almighty God? What, which one do you say He is? Because see, it, it's very important that we understand that, that He's not up there hoping you'll do something. He's not twisting His hands thinking that you might accept Him, whatever that means. Right? Do you know Christ? Because, listen... If you don't, you're a, you're a man, you're a woman, most miserable. Amen. And you know, this is the reality. Everybody thinks about, you know, drunks on the street. You know what? I've met people on Baptist pews. I was pretty sure they didn't know the person of Christ. And, I, and I'm, not talking, I'm not talking little bitty ones. I, I'm talking 
I, I knew a woman one time at church I visited. She told me she didn't remember when uh, she wasn't saved. I, I wanted to say to her, well, you probably still lost then. Because listen, if, if He's never revealed to you that you're lost, you know what? Then you're still lost. You couldn't possibly be saved if you didn't know you were lost, could you? And, and, and so we see then as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know where we stand. So we ask Him, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, who did the revealing? The Father God, Jehovah, revealed, hey, this is my Son. Now, in the modern day, because remember, uh, during, the, uh, during, during the ministry of Christ, right toward the end, He says, uh, Behold, I send you a comforter. Right. See, Jehovah God doesn't do the revealing anymore. God the Holy Spirit does. That's why you need to be very careful we don't minimize the person of the Holy Ghost because He's got a huge job to do. Yeah. So, Simon said, uh, Lord Jesus says to Peter, listen, God did that. So who does the saving? God does. Was Peter encouraged to be baptized? No. In fact, the best I understand, he had John's baptism, right? So then, it comes down to this, do you know Him or do you not know Him? Are you intimate with Christ or are, are you not? And, and so, uh, Paul, I mean, excuse me, Jesus points out to Peter that this revealing of the person of Christ is a work of God and not a work of man. And where, uh, you know what, the, the, the Satan's biggest catch bag that he's used for the last 150 years is accepting Jesus. You know what? It don't matter whether you accept it or not. Christ is on the throne this morning. Yes. And if you think He is good, and you know what? If you don't think He is, He's still on the throne. You know, another thing, the Bible says, God don't take counsel from nobody. He don't need your advice. He don't need your help. Christ does what seemeth good unto Himself. That, 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 that's the God of the Bible. So, we as the Lord's people this morning, we need to understand and know that our salvation aligns with this salvation. And it's not any, even the least bit less than that. Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 26. Luke chapter 2 and verse 26. Now this is speaking of Zacharias the prophet. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, I want you to see, speaking of Zacharias, it says that it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. So we find that the agent that is a revealing agent today is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He tells us what we need to do. Because you can look through your entire King James Bible this morning and it never says, I want Larry Lafferty to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? To me, that was a revealed truth. I knew that it was the command of God and I knew that it had to be done. But it was a revealed truth. Concerning, huh, concerning the Holy Ghost. You know what? Those intricacies of the Holy Ghost are revealed by God. Because you know what? Even the average Baptist church today don't understand beings about the Holy Ghost. Right. See, that, 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 is, that, that is a revealed truth. And, and, and somehow, because of His goodness, He came by and said, Listen, you're going to see Christ, child. You're going, to, you're going to see the God-man as a baby before you check out. 
you're going to see it. And you know what? I said that he rejoiced. Remember old Anna in the temple? Very same thing. She rejoiced saying, let thy servant depart in peace. See, we, we as the Lord's people, things can be revealed to us. Now, with that said, let me say this. His revealing to us will never violate that book. In other words, if a woman comes to you and says, well, the Lord's called me to preach, you can mark her down and say, well, she, that, that wasn't a revealing coming from Christ. Because you know what the Bible says? <laughs> First thing of a bishop, the husband of one wife. You know what? There's no way a woman can be a husband. Also, the Bible says this, that the women are to remain silent in the assembly. And you know what? You can't preach and be quiet. So we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know this morning where we stand at with Christ and has He revealed Himself to you or has He not? Gospel of John, chapter number 12. John 12, verse 37. John 12 and verse 37. The Bible says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk ye, walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness know not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of the light. These things Jesus spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. But, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not that, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who have believed our report, and who have the arm of the Lord revealed. Now that's a direct referral back to Isaiah that we read in Isaiah 53. And who was it hid from? That, that's what he's saying. That many heard him and didn't believe. Well, the majority of the people that it was never revealed to was the Jews. And you know what? They still don't believe him today. You know what? Uh, the revealing of the Holy Ghost... Is, I, you know what? I really wish that I could make it happen. I sincerely mean that. And if you follow the ministry of Paul, he got down to that point too. He said, if it were possible, I, I, I would give my own life. So Israel might know. Remember that? But see, that, that's the impossibility of it all. The revealing comes from God. And we as the Lord's people, what we are to do is to pray. And to pray... And to pray some more. And then we need, we need to look for personal revelation if the, what the Lord is asking us to do. Be obedient when, when He tells us to speak to that person in the workplace. Be obedient when He tells us to speak to that neighbor. That, 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 is, that, that, that is being obedient to reveal truth. And we as the Lord's people need to understand and, and to know that. Some precious truths that He might reveal. And this seems crazy, but it is. The fact that you're a sinner is a revealed truth. Because you know, you know what we think about ourselves? That we're pretty okay. That we've done pretty good. You know, the very fact that you're a hopeless, helpless sinner is a revealed truth. The next revealed truth you need to think about that He is an all-complete Savior. You don't need anything but Jesus. That's a revealed truth. And then lastly, uh, a revealed truth is that Jesus, the Godhead, all in all, they're sovereign. And they've never made one failure. You know, you know what some will want you to believe today? Just say, uh, I don't know, whoever the town drunk is, never knew Jesus, dies, that, that, that Jesus has failed. You know, that's about as stupid as you can come up with. You know what? I really believe the best historical records I can find, Hitler split, split hell wide open. Did Christ fail? No. You know what? Simply this, the Bible says He was 
It says of the ones that are not Jesus's that they were vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. And you know what? He did exactly what God planned for him to do. That's the God of the Bible. What about you? Do you really believe God is sovereign or do you think He's something else? 